Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the DFS Express, presented by Loudmouth MMA and MMAToday.com. I am your host, the DFS Sniper, Sean I has here to talk UFC Fight Night 119. Derek Brunson versus Lyoto Machida is the main event. Before we get started, please give me a follow on Twitter at the DFS Sniper. Like and comment this video and subscribe to my YouTube page. Just search the DFS Sniper. It is all greatly appreciated. Now let's get into this card. All 12 fights, DraftKings specific picks in just 10 minutes, along with a cash game lineup build. We'll start with the main event. Derek Brunson, 8,400 versus Lyoto Machida, 7,800. And the two big unknowns in this fight are how is Lyoto Machida going to look after two and a half years off? And what is Derek Brunson going to do? Is he going to bull rush forward? Or are we going to like the Robert Whitaker fight? Or are we going to see a more measured uh, approach like in the Anderson Silva fight. It's really A or B outcome. If we see Derek Brunson of old, he's going to rush forward and either knock out Machida or Machida is going, going to do what he does best, counter strike and knock out Brunson. Or we could see a low scoring striking match. I think Brunson has a few more paths to victory. I also, I just don't like siding with the guy who has been off for two and a half years, even if he's in his home country. I'll take Derek Brunson slight lean for 8,400. Colby Covington, 8,200. Damian Maia, 8,000. Another fight that people seem to have really strong opinions on, and I can't understand why it is razor thin. Colby Covington, great wrestler. Damian Maia, obviously world-class Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Did just have 21 takedowns stuffed against Tyron Woodley. I don't know if Covington is that good of a defensive wrestler, is a, is a NCAA D1 All-American. I wish I knew Covington's game plan, similar to the Brunson fight. Is he going to go out and try and put Maya on his butt in the first 90 seconds? Probably not the best idea, even if you are a good wrestler. I think Covington has a marginal edge in the striking and could stay away from Maya and, and have success that way and look for takedowns later in the fight. Whereas Maya, his only path to victory really is the... Submission. I don't think he's going to be able to get Covington down. Again, a quick worry I have on this one is that Covington, if he ends up on his back, a wrestler on his back sometimes can be bad news. I don't think we've seen him there. I think Covington has more tools, a little better striking, could maintain top position. I'll take Covington as the better play at 8,200. Rob Font, 8,700. Pedro Munoz, 7,500. Finally, a fight I won't be wishy-washy about. I like Rob Font a lot. I also think Pedro Munoz is overrated. Uh, Munoz rushes forward, very aggressive. Font is a good striker. I think he catches Munoz moving forward. I think Font is in play in all formats very solidly at 8,700. Francisco Trinaldo against Jim Miller. Trinaldo's the favorite, 8,600. Jim Miller at 7,600. There are limited spots for value on this card, and even those spots where there's value, it's hard to feel really good about any of these picks. I'm going to lean Jim Miller because Trinaldo can be taken down. He also has shown really worrisome cardio. I know Miller's getting over Lyme disease, but I think he can just grind out Francisco Trinaldo if the fight gets to the later rounds. Tornaldo's the better striker, kickboxer. Like a fight that I I see each guy winning a round and a half. I think Tornaldo won't be able to finish Miller. And it's going to be a close decision in Brazil, which is worrisome for Miller. But again, with the price difference, I'll take the shot. And I think Miller is the better DraftKings play at 7,600. Jack Hermanson, 8,300 versus Thiago Santos, 7,900. Interesting... Uh, Striker, knockout, kickboxer in Santos versus Hermanson, who's going to want to ground and pound. Um, Hermanson has tore through people, but it's people of low quality like Bradley Scott. Um, Santos, on the other hand, the few times he's been taken on the ground, he hasn't looked good. Eric Spicely tore right through him. Is Hermanson going to be able to get the fight down to the ground? I honestly, this fight comes down to two things for me. I, I, as odd as it sounds, the small detail, what size octagon are they going to be using? I heard some rumblings. They, I'm recording this on Wednesday night. They might be using the smaller cage. If that's the case, I'll take Hermanson. Um, more room to work his takedowns. If there's more space, I like Santos. If all things be, being equal, since I don't have that information, I'll take Tiago Santos for the small price savings for now at 7900 
John Lineker, 9,400. Marlon Vera, 6,800. I should just move right along since I'm running long. Lineker is just better everywhere. Vera caught Kelleher and beat a fading Brad Pickett. I'll take Lineker. I think he's head and shoulders above Marlon Vera, even if he is the most expensive fighter on the card. Vicente Luque, 8,500. Nico Price, 7,700. Really close matchup, but Vicente Luque has shown he is very inconsistent. Nico Price has a ground game, has some power. I think he's just a little better everywhere. It's a really, really close fight, but I'm leaning Price. It also helps that he is the, the less expensive fighter. So I'll take Nico Price as the better DraftKings play at 7,700. Antonio Carlos Jr., 9,200 against Jack Marshman, 7,000. I am a big fan of Antonio Carlos Jr. He is He won the Ultimate Fighter in Brazil at heavyweight, fighting at middleweight. World, world-class Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Jack Marshman, not any good. ACJ, shoe phase, also has tons of power. Um, I think Marshman's going to try and stand with him and catch a right hand and get knocked out. And if he doesn't, Antonio Carlos Jr. should take him down and submit him. Should be an easy win, 9,200 for shoe face. Jared Gordon, 8,400 against Hakran Diaz, 7,800. I have, throughout the career of Hakran Diaz, just gone underwhelmed. I don't quite get the hype. I think he's... I think Jared Gordon is just better. Um, should be able to get takedowns in this fight. Hakan Diaz is tough, but a 7800, I just I don't even think he's worth the play. I think Jared Gordon wins it. Little concerned about the scoring, but I will take Jared Gordon at 8400. Elizio Zaleski dos Santos 9000. Max Griffin 7200. This is one of those DraftKings. I think it's a closer fight than the DraftKings pricing. Uh, dos Santos is. Tough to pay 9000 for him. Griffin is a very live dog at 7200 um, Dos Santos had just had a really fun fight against Lyman Good. Griffin um, coming off, I believe, a win against Eric Montano. We're going to see what happens here. Zaleski Dos Santos can be taken down. If Griffin has a good game plan, I think he wins that way. So I like Griffin with the takedown potential and the cheap price tag, 7200 I think he's the better DraftKings play. Jared Brooks, 8,900. Davison Figueredo Alcantara, 7,300. Close fight. Uh, again, it's just the odds. The pricing is too severe for me. Figueroa, 7,300. Never in a boring fight. Jared Brooks, 8,900. Um, was just in a fight against um, Eric Shelton, who makes fights fights look dirty. I'm going to lean pick-wise for the fight. Jared Brooks, but Figueroa opens up so much value on DraftKings. 125 pounders, I don't expect to finish. So DraftKings, I like the value of Alcantara, but my fight picks would probably be Brooks at 8,900. They're both in play, but if I may make me pick one, I'll go for the price savings in Alcantara. Marcelo Gome, 8,800. Christian Colombo, 7,400. Christian Colombo sucks, but Golm is making his UFC debut, never been out of the first round, and is a Brazilian heavyweight. All things being equal, I think Golm's the better play at 8,800. Don't sleep on Christian Colombo and GPPs, though. No one's going to be on him. He's a heavyweight at 7,400. So Golm's the better play overall. Colombo may be worth a GPP dart. to DraftKings. We are a little short on time this week. As a reminder, we're going to do a cash game build. These are for your double-ups, 50-50 type games. Um, my basic strategy this week is I only want to pay up in one place. It's not a ton of value I'm really comfortable in. So that means they can really only afford one high-priced fighter. This week, your choices really are Lineker and Carlos Jr. I'm going to go towards Carlos Jr. I think he's got more finish potential. Uh, a little safer. They're both really safe. It's also the extra 200 in savings that make me lean towards shoe face. Down towards the bottom, I'm going to put in Max Griffin just because even if he loses, I don't think Zaleski Dos Santos finishes him. Uh, and he's very live, and I think we'll get the fight to the ground. It's going to be 8,400 a fighter. I'm going to head right towards Nico Price at 7,700. I don't. Th he's a little better everywhere than Luke K. And again, I need the savings. You could put in Jim Miller there. But there's more potential, I think, for an early finish. Um, scrolling back up, I think Rob Font is also super safe. Not very expensive at 8,700. He's 8,600 a fighter. Stay away from Maya and Covington in cash. It's just there's too much volatility there. I'm going to go Jared Gordon at 8,400. I think he's pretty safe to get takedowns and score some points against Hakran Diaz. 
And your choices are Brunson and Marcelo Gohm. Heavyweights are tough in cash. I'll put in Derek Brunson. By the way, if you don't like... I would take out Gordon before Brunson if you wanted to play Marcelo Gohm. That is also an option. So the cash game lineup built here in, in the Express. Shoe face at 9,200. Griffin at 72. Price at 7,700. Rob Fon at 87. Derek Brunson at 84. And your choice, either Marcelo Gohm, it's a little riskier at 8,800, or Jared Gordon at 8,400. Guys, please like and comment this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give me a follow on Twitter. Again, I cannot stress, stress enough how much I appreciate it. Good luck in your contest. I will see you next week.